Well, I would like, everyone standing, please, I would like to just sing all night. But we're not going to. Well, maybe we will. Sometimes I think we ought to preach first and sing later. But I know that praise opens the atmosphere. But this thing got open nine days ago. <laughs> yeah. The spirit of the living God has been in this place. And I've done it all week long here from this platform and online across America and in hundreds and hundreds of churches. But I want to thank God for the opportunity tonight here live on the wonderful Word Network. I want to give glory to God for my dear friend Kevin Adele and for a network that'll let us cast out devils and speak in new tongues and see folks be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and prospered in their find. I guess just do the gospel. And I could not be more proud. I don't know of anybody I've been more proud of than this young prophet of God hewn out of a mountain, rolled down through Babylon and crushed the adversary under his feet like powder and blow it away under an anointing of the Holy Ghost. I'm not one to brag that much, but I brag on this one because he's worthy to be bragged on. I want to thank God for the anointing upon the life of, the obedience of, and the anointing through his prophet, Prophet Brian Karn. Make him welcome once again and get ready. Come on, clap if you know something. If you know something good is about to happen in your life, come on, let's make the devil mad tonight. Come on. Come on, let's make the devil. I told you to shout about it now and talk about it later. Open your mouth and give them glory in here. Because I believe late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn thing around and it's going to work in your favor. The devil is going to hate he ever put his hands on you because there's a people that God is getting ready to raise up that's getting ready to walk in a supernatural power with a supernatural anointing. We're getting ready to turn America upside down because there's a fresh anointing about to be released all over the world. I dare you to scream like you know God's going. Do me a favor, go hug about five people and tell them I'm excited about your future. I'm excited about your future.
Are y'all ready for the night? I said, are you ready for the night? You believe every My dear friends, will be we'll be back tonight. live with Private Prophet Do Brock and Khan just a moment. A phenomenon is happening online. We've never experienced anything like it. I'm so thankful that you're right there right now. Thank God for the technology of this great church and the breakthrough ministry that are able to bring you live programming like this at World Harvest Church Live. And then many of you are unaware of iHarv.tv. If you're on World Harvest Live right now, you can jump over to iHarv.tv, I-H-A-R-V.tv. When you do, you will be connected to us immediately and live in real time so that we can minister to you specifically about your need. You can contact us right there on the screen. We are here praying with you. My pastors are here to pray with you. Miss Joni comes in and prays with you. You can log on and my daughter Ashton Blair will be there ministering to you. I will be here in this room ministering to you as the service is going on. So let me invite you right now to jump on over to iHarv.tv if you are at World Harvest Live. Do it right now, and there's much, much more interactive ministry available to you when you do that. We love you. God bless you. Get ready for a night of nights right here. I know the blessing of God is coming your way. Here we go. Back to the tabernacle. Acts. Quickly, go to Acts chapter 19. I feel good, y'all. Now, I need you to tell your neighbor, God is up to something. Now, remember, you should have whatever you say, all right? Now, say it again. Say, God is up to something. One more time. Say, God is up to something. You believe that? All right. Let, let's get to the book of Acts. And let's, let's, let's get there quickly. Acts, the 19th chapter. Lord, have mercy. I just saw an angel. Lift your hand. Come out that key. It's too high for me. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Thirty seconds. Lift your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I said 30 seconds, pray in the Holy Ghost. You got 25 left. You got 20 seconds left. You got 10 seconds left to pray in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say hallelujah. Acts chapter 19, real quick, let's stand for the reading of the word and I get on out your way. Acts chapter 19. Play something back there, make it sound real good. Praise the Lord. Oh, that's beautiful. Acts 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 1, And it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? They said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, How were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which shall come after him. That is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. 
Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. neighbor. Wrong one, wrong one. I, I, I think they come out the Catholic Church, so find somebody else. That, wrong, 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 wrong. Wrong one, wrong one, wrong, wrong, wrong. wrong. And say, neighbor. neighbor. There's another dimension. Don't get comfortable where you are. Yeah, find somebody else and say, neighbor, yeah. there's another dimension. Don't get comfortable where you are. Real quick, find somebody way across the room, look at him and say, hey, there's another dimension. Don't get comfortable where you are. Lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, we release you. Speak a word to us and cause our lives to never be the same. Send a move of the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you for what's happening right now all over this country. The yokes are being destroyed and burdens are being lifted. Speak to us and cause there to be a shaking and a shifting. Holy Ghost, shake this place like a rug tonight. Father, shake it till it can't be shaken anymore. God, I put every witch on notice tonight and tell them get saved or get delivered because God's getting ready to send a power in this room. Father, release the fire of the Holy Ghost all over this room in Jesus' name. Shake three people on your way down and tell them there's got to be more. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. Real quick, I want to talk to you about something that the Spirit of God has been dealing with me real heavily on. Just give me 20 minutes. Something that the Spirit of God has been dealing with me real heavy on is this issue called the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's something that we really don't deal with too much anymore. We talk about it, but there was a time in the church, at least the Pentecostal church, it was understood that when you got saved that you did not stop at salvation. Yeah, that, that there was another place, there was another dimension, there was another level that you, you didn't stop because everything in God has different dimensions. As I told you the other day, you have the outer court, you have the inner court, and then you have the Holy of Holies. And so many people are comfortable with 30-fold and 60-fold when God desires to give you 100-fold. There's something that is really missing in our churches today. We go to church and we have church and we hear good messages and the truth of the matter is uh, there's an indictment against the church where we put God on a time schedule and tell God you have an hour and a half to move and if you don't move in an hour and a half we're going about our business I know you're not going to shout but I'm going to preach anyway yeah there's an indictment on our churches and the enemy is slowly creeping in because we no longer have time to take the time to get people delivered the truth of the matter is I tell people all the time that the church is a hospital and at the hospital you have three different sections you know you have the first part which is administration who takes your money you have the second part which are doctors who only are, who only work from eight to five at a certain time you know like the primary doctor the physician but then you have the emergency room and all of those have different things well the first part which is the administration is like some church that all they're good for is taking your money. Y'all say it in here. Then the second part is doctors who are on a schedule. See, some of you will never get delivered because your deliverance is not on the program. Some of you will never get your breakthrough because it's not on the program. But then you have doctors who are in the emergency room. Matter of fact, I want to let you know you in the emergency room tonight. The doctors in the emergency the room sometime they don't get to sleep for two and three days but they stay there all night until you get your breakthrough or your healing or your deliverance God is getting ready to raise up a people who are not looking at the clock but are saying if it's all night it's all right because there's something that I'm after and I won't be satisfied until I get it slap your neighbor and say there's got to be more yeah, they taught us to receive Jesus. They taught us that Romans 10 and 9, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. That's what they taught us. But they also let us know that when you got done getting saved, you needed something to keep you. 
yeah, that you can't keep yourself because your flesh, my flesh, your mammy flesh, your grandmammy flesh is nasty. Yeah, Paul said, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Some of you in here act like you got it together, act like you wonderful. Come on, you got to be honest with yourself. You know your flesh is jacked up. If God was to pull up some of the thoughts you thought today, we'd have to, you have to walk out of here with your finger up. Y'all ain't saying that. God done kept you. He done covered you. And I bind that old religious judgmental spirit when you come to church acting like you got it all together. Isaiah 64 and 6 declares that all your righteousness is as filthy rags. Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Shake your neighbor and say, it's his grace on my life. It ain't my education. It ain't my degrees. It ain't my skill. It ain't my looks. It's his grace. His grace got me where I am. His grace gave me that house. His grace gave me that car. His grace kept me from losing my mind. His grace kept me from having a breakdown. Slap somebody and shout grace. I am what I am by his grace. I don't have a right to look down on nobody. I don't have a right to talk about nobody. Some of you in here, you look good in church. You got a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You got a Rolls Royce body, but a lawnmower engine. You look good on the outside, but you ain't carrying nothing on the inside. Let me tell you how I can tell when you're saved for real. I don't listen to them tongues. I listen to how you treat people. Y'all quiet in here. That's how I know whether you save them. Because some of y'all speak in tongues and you're nasty. You're meaner than a junkyard dog. Use a whole chasing free basin. Whiskey nipping, cocaine sniffing, pill popping, weed chopping, tobacco chewing, cigarette sucking, pipe puffing, skirt chasing, midnight rambling devil. Y'all ain't saying that in here. But I come to tell you, if any that man be in Christ. He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Tell somebody I want it right. Can I keep going? So you are what you are because of his grace that taught us that you can't keep yourself and it's not enough just to stop it at Jesus. That there's another dimension. There's another ram. Well, what happens is uh, in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, you remember what happened. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pentecost had always been, but it never came in its fullness. Uh, he told the disciples, he said, listen, uh, I, I, I'm going to leave you, but make sure you go to Jerusalem. Uh, I want you to go there and I want you to wait. Uh, I don't want you to go nowhere until you be endued with power from on high. I need a camera to look at a preacher right now. And I want to tell you, you ain't have no business preaching if you ain't got no power. Y'all quiet in here. I want to tell every preacher that you have no business witnessing until you got power. Some of y'all trying to go to the crack house and you ain't got no power. Some of y'all trying to go to the drug house and the whole house and the courthouse and the crack house and you ain't got no power. You are not equipped until you have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is your equipment to deal with the powers of the enemy. Matter of fact, I read in my Bible, behold, I give unto you power to tread over serpents and over scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing. Somebody shout nothing. I don't care what the witch try to do to you. The witch can't hex you. The witch can't vex you. I read in Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Y'all don't read y'all Bible, see you. Some of y'all right here sitting here scared. You scared of Dr. Buzzard and scared that somebody working hoodoo and voodoo on you. 
I want the witch to know tonight that I read in Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat of my flesh? They stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, though war should rise, I would not fear one thing. Have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after to behold the beauty of the Lord to inquire in his temple. Why? Because in the time of trouble, he's going to hide me. I'm not scared of no witch. Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God. Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noise and pestilence. Under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler. I will not be afraid of the arrow that fly by day, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday, nor the peasant that fly by night. A thousand shall fall at one side, ten thousand at my right hand, but no evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over. He said, go to Jerusalem. Go. And, and, and wait. Slap your neighbor, say wait. wait. Yeah, tell somebody else, say wait. wait. Some of you don't know how to wait in his presence. Yeah. Some of you don't know how to just sit there and, and wait before God. You understand? Some of us are in a rush. We go and pray and make God move at our time schedule. But sometimes he just wants you to sit there and wait on him. Yeah. Ain't nothing like being still in the presence of God and waiting there telling him, I'm not going nowhere until you come see about me. Isaiah 45, 15 say he's the God of Israel who hides him himself. One thing about God, what he likes to do is he'll hide himself. Why does he hide? Because he wants somebody to seek him. He, he wants somebody that'll stay in his presence and say, I'm not going nowhere until you manifest your glory in my life. You remember when you first fell in love with him. You didn't want to go nowhere till you felt this presence. You didn't feel right if you didn't cry. Come on, talk to me in here. You wanted to cry. You wanted to shake. You, you wanted something to happen. You would wait on them. But now, because we don't want to wait on them, we done manufactured the Holy Ghost. We done came up with something that we call the Holy Ghost, where we tell folk to speak in tongues. And I'm talking about the Bible, Holy Ghost said, you ain't got to tell nobody how to speak in tongues. John chapter 7 say, he that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, that thing will come out of your body belly shall flow rivers ah, of living water. When you first got the Holy Ghost, you didn't want to stop speaking in tongues. You were scared that if you once went to bed and woke up, it wasn't going to be there no more. Anybody glad you got it? Tell somebody, I got it. I got it. How you know? I don't do what I used to do. I don't talk like I used to talk. I don't go where I used to go. Acts chapter 2. He said, I want you to wait. Acts 2 and 1 say, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, a sound came from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind, they was all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak another tongue as the Spirit of God gave utterance. That's Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 was a room full of Jews. You know, salvation was of the Jews. Acts chapter 2 was a room full of Jews. Acts the Tim chapter, Jesus is getting ready to open the door for the Gentiles. He takes Peter up in a trance and shows Peter <laughs> a, a sheet with a whole bunch of four-footed, unclean beasts. Y'all read your Bibles, right? Yeah. He puts it on a spread and he tells them, get up and eat it. And Peter responds. Because remember now, Peter is saved, but he prejudiced. Yeah, yeah, he was saved, but he was prejudiced. He, he loved God, but he, he was prejudiced. He thought that the Jews had a copyright on the Holy Ghost. 
So what happens is he, he, he's looking and he got a sheep there and four places you understand because God is getting ready to tell him I'm giving you this vision because I'm getting ready to give the Holy Ghost to people from the four corners of the earth and he says to him uh, I can't eat nothing unclean and God said how dare you call unclean what I call clean. As soon as he comes out of the vision there's a knock on his door and here comes a man by the name of Cornelius Y'all read your Bibles, don't you? You remember Cornelius. He was a devout man, and the Bible declares uh, that his prayer and his arms had went up uh, as a memorial unto God. Uh, Peter went to that man's house and started preaching, uh, and the Bible declares why Peter yet spake the word. Uh, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that believe, uh, and they of the circumcision, that's Jews, uh, were astonished uh, because on the uncircumcised uh, they began to feel the Holy Ghost too. And the Bible say, how did they know? Verse 47. For they heard them speak with tongues. I'm going somewhere. That's Acts 2. That's Acts 10. But here comes Acts chapter 19. If you look at the beginning of Acts, you see Peter a lot. But as you get to the end of Acts, you begin to see Paul come on the scene. And when Paul comes on the scene, I like Paul because, see, Paul was educated, but he didn't have no power yeah Paul was very astute he was a student of the law Philippians 3 said he was a Hebrew of the Hebrews Pharisee of the Pharisee concerning zeal he persecuted the church concerning the law he was blameless he said I was circumcised on the eighth day came from the tribe of Benjamin got the stock of Israel he was an intelligent man but he had no power looked like most of our preachers today they're intelligent but don't have no power they're educated but don't have have no power. They can work a room but can't cast the devil out because they don't have no power. There was a time when demons manifested, we cast them out. Now when demons manifest, we call security because we don't have no power. Y'all ain't shout no more. What's wrong? And you and you smart. You smart. You know not to mess with that demon because that demon will tell you what you did last night. Y'all quiet in here. Somebody say we got to get it right. Get it right. Good. Yeah, we're, we're educated. We look good. We dress well. We drive good. We we house. I mean, we, we got it together. You understand. But one thing about a true child of God, you can get a brand new house. You can get a nice car, but that don't satisfy you. There's a longing in you for a deeper depth and a higher height in God. I remember the Lord blessed me some, some years ago with a real nice car and somebody called me. They said, I heard you got a new car. I said, I did. They said, you like it? I said, I love it. They said, well, you sound like you've been crying. I said, I am crying. They said, what you crying for? I said, I'm crying because I have a nice car, but I have an auntie at home that's completely paralyzed on one side of her body, and I'm preaching all over the world, but I got family members who are still bound by demons and cancers, and you think I'm satisfied with just coming to church and shouting and screaming and bucking her. When I got family that the devil got his hands upon them. You ain't anointed until you can win your house. You ain't got power until you can y'all ain't talking back to me in here. The word of God declares that you can't take care of his house until you can take care of your own house. That's why, uh oh, let me talk to bishops again. I gotta get to the camera again. That's why the Bible said if a man desire the office of a bishop, he got to be blameless. That just killed 75% of y'all right there. Then he said you got to be the husband of one wife. That just killed the rest of you. Y'all ain't talking to me. We got to get this thing in order. The Bible said my house shall be called. Uh, Y'all ain't shouting in here, but it's all right. Somebody say get it right. True child of God will have a nice car, but while you riding in that car, I begin to ride in that car and I begin to say thank you Lord, thank you for this car, but this ain't what I want. I want your glory. I desire to be close to you. I want to feel you like I used to. You remember there was a time when you first got saved, when you would lift your hands, the presence of God would overcome you. You had such a glow on you. You didn't have to tell nobody you were saved. They could 
say there's something different about you. Your family wouldn't drink around you. They wouldn't smoke because you had a high standard. But now we done got used to this thing and we don't have no standard no more. And the enemy is creeping in the church. And now you can't tell the difference between church women and sanctified women. You dress like the world. You act like the world. You come to church with a split from Genesis to Revelation and don't want nobody. Y'all quiet. It's all right. I'm a preacher. Said I preach that demon up out of you tonight. Yeah, God got to get this thing in order. And I come to tell you judgment is getting ready to begin in the house of the Lord. That's why you better tell God whatever's in me that ain't like you, get it out of me. I don't want to come to church and die and go to hell. I want God to be pleased with my life. Somebody shake your neighbor and say holy. I'm almost done. They got it. But Acts 19. Paul found some disciples. And say, hey, y'all say, you say, but, but I need to ask you something. I need to ask you something. I, you, you, you say, but you, you, you ain't complete. You, you, you got it, but over there, in, when you look at uh, Apollos, remember Aquila and Priscilla? When it had a talk with Apollos, and the Bible, one version say, they showed them a more excellent way. But when you look at another version, they say they went to show Apollos the rest of the story. Yeah. He said, uh, he said uh, in 19, he said, uh, hey, I believe it was John's disciples. And he said, um, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Now, that just killed your doctrine that says when you believe, you get the Holy Ghost with it. Acts 19 just showed you that you can be a believer and don't have the Holy Ghost. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? No! I ain't heard about it. I don't know about no Holy Ghost. Well, how was you baptized? John baptism. Water. He say, well, remember John told you to, to believe on somebody who going to come after him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when he come, he going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. No. And they, 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 was, they was dumb enough to believe it. Why I say dumb enough? Because see, when it come to this, God don't reveal this to the smart people. Read your Bible. See, when you're educated, you can't get this. Because the knowledge puff up, yeah. See, you folk that sit there and be trying to figure stuff out and analyze stuff, you can't get this. He, he don't reveal it to the smart. The books say he reveal it to the dumb. Matter of fact, God called us so dumb, he called us sheep. Y'all quiet in here. And if you look at a sheep, it's the dumbest animal on the face of the earth. It can't fight. It don't know what to do. It's blind. Y'all quiet in here. A sheep need a shepherd. Y'all ain't talking to me in here. And See, what's wrong with us is some of y'all think you grown. Yeah. Can't nobody tell you nothing. I was telling somebody something the other day. And they tell me something, I'm grown. You don't talk to me like that. I said, well, you'll never get nothing from God. Because God don't deal with grown people. He said, except you be converted as a little child. Y'all quiet. See, some of you are too grown. That's why you can't get it. He needs the simple. He needs people that'll take him at his word. You know, when you got a little child and you tell a little child you're going to do something, they take you at your word. God is looking for somebody that if I tell you I'm going to deliver your family, you will take me at my word. If I tell you that I'm going to open the window of heaven and pull you out a blessing, you will take me at my word. I need about 500 people in here that believe God is about to send revival to your house. To jump on your feet and shout, I want 